Welcome back everyone. So I've been meaning to get back into doing this videos and projects and all that stuff. So time to get to it. Now, first thing that I need to do is to upgrade all my equipment because, you know, in order to do some of the real heavy duty stuff, I'm going to need something better to work with than just standard jelly filament plastic, right? So I need to upgrade my 3D printer. Let me bring it that down so I can show you. Oh, shape that was odd. Anyway, so these are my 3D printers. These are my favorite. There are, mm, I think, like two different upgrades that have been done to the Ender 5. I'm still using the first base edition because um, there really isn't a reason to upgrade. I mean, if you don't have it, buy the upgraded version. But for me, they already have it. Eh, it's not justified spending the money. But regardless of that, time to upgrade this baby. Now, everything works well, except this guy right here, that little box, right? So let me show you what's on the inside of this box. So inside of this box, you have a fan. Uh, Technically, that fan is not used for this actual stuff inside. That fan is to cool down the, the actual thing you're printing. But anyway, the actual function is the fan and this piece of metal right here called the hot end. This is how it looks mounted. These red and white cables, uh, they basically control the heating system. The red will actually uh, send electricity like 24, 12 volts. It's 24 for this one. And it will actually heat up this block. That's what actually melts the plastic. The white one, that just tells the computer how hot it is. So if I want to keep it at, let's say, 200 degrees, this is the one that tells it, hey, it's at 210. Stop it. They're like, oh, it's at 2000. I mean, it's at uh, 190, started back up, you know, to keep it exactly in the middle. And then you have this whole setup, which is where the filament comes in and yada, yada. I just smacked my microphone. All right, so I need to upgrade that. That, um, it works fine, but I need something better because I'm going to start using far more, let's say, exotic material plastic that's a lot stronger and has a bunch of other properties that just make it a lot better for mm, certain specific uh, things you want to build, right? So these are various, I will say. Um, they all have their advantages, but as you can see, they're pretty much the same design, which is a thin made out of aluminum and you know like a tube in the middle pretty standard design however there are these other guys right these are not that common as the other ones these uh if you type it in on amazon you will find more of the other guys than of these guys and the difference between these guys as you can see it has no fins because and they're more blocky and that's because these are water cool, right? Now, the obvious question is, is there a difference? Are these better? That's what I wanted to find out. So. To explain to you the difference, because for us to even begin to compare them, we need to see how they work, right? So I took two that I found that uh, eh, look pretty nice and simple to make into a 3D design. And I made a three-dimensional version of them. So we can open them up and see how they work inside. All right, so as you can see, the internals are not that different. Let's see. Okay, yeah. All right. As you can see, it's same tip, same block, 
same throat, what really changes is what's attached to the throat. This piece right here, right? That one's finned, this one's solid. So, how does this work? So in both cases, the block is the first piece that gets heated up because uh, that's what's connected to the actual cables that I mentioned earlier. From there, the heat will be transferred to both the tip and the throat. Now, this is obviously what we want. We want the tip to be hot because that's where the pest comes in and comes out in a, in a semi-liquid state. That's what we want, that's great. However, this is what we don't want right here. This piece right here. This is now hot. We do not want that because that can lead to possible clogs. This basically stops being straight, starts like wiggling up, uh, kind of like, a, like a tornado, you know, like a twist inside. And then no matter how much you push, it will not go down, right? It will not melt. It just becomes like this solid charred piece that is just stuck in there. So this bad, we don't want this. That's what these guys are for. They take away the heat from the throat, thereby cooling this area. Right, and preventing that nasty clogging and stuff, right? Problem is, or from an engineering standpoint, this will not take the heat away forever. Eventually, it's going to saturate, and you're going to have the original problem back. So, we need to take the heat away from these guys. That thinned one over there achieves this by blowing some air through it, right? As you can see, Cool air goes in, takes the heat, hot air comes out. That goes into the environment, and uh, hopefully your setup can not just suddenly make the room super hot for you because, you know, that causes other problems. But, you. What happened here? Okay, whatever. Anyway, so on this one, instead of air, you get water. Cool water comes in and uh, takes it to some reservoir to get pulled off. Hopefully. Now, this right here. Basically tells you that the only the only real difference between these two setups is one is cooled by air, the other is cooled by water. Now, I went and asked the uh, Chat GPT, of course, which one has the better transfer rate, right? Uh, both of them will use aluminum. Aluminum tends to have the same amount of heat rate transfer. So we can discard that fact. As you can see here, 0 0.0257 is the heat transfer rate of air. Next, I asked it, what's the heat transfer rate of water? And we got a 0 0.606. That is, I believe, a 24, 25 difference, like times. So that means compared to air, water is 25 times more effective at taking the heat away from some object. So this obviously tells me water is the better option. So here are the two that I decided to buy and test out, right? I mean, I'll end up putting one of these later into my Ender 5. But as you can see, 
Mm, one is bigger than the other. Oh. Let me see if I can get out of the way. Okay. Uh, damn it. Okay, so these will be our two test subjects for today. You got the NF water block over there. It's uh, it was made in China, but uh, you know, China tends to copy the designs. So it's actually the original design comes from the UK, designed by a company called or labeled E3D. Right, it has a three point mount, and currently in the year 2023, you can get it for between thirty to forty dollars. This other one. As you can see, is uh, pretty much double the size. Country is, uh, I don't know. The design is very unique. I don't see any other of it like it on the market. It has zero mounting points. That's why I'm turning around. See, so like, it, there is no hole. How, how do you mount this on your 3D printer? You know, it's like, oh, that's up to you. Good luck. I do not know what the modern cost of this because as far as I know, it's been discontinued because everybody kept complaining that, yeah, I cannot mount this. So, whatever. But uh, luckily, I do have the tools to be able to mount this by modifying aluminum. Now, the thing that I like about this one, it allows you to see inside. As you can see, just like the 3D rendition, it's a very simple design. Water comes in through one end. There's uh, some channels that water goes through, comes out hot water. Very simple, right? So let's move on. Okay. Now, even though these two are test subjects, I will include the original hot end for our control, right? You always need to compare it to something. So I will just use the original. I didn't buy another fancy one because um, I'm not going to use it. So uh, let's see here. Here's the plan I'm going to hook them up just like you see, right? Uh, you're able to see on the very top. Oh, wow, my hand. All right. You're able to see on the top a white wire. That wire is basically, or it's going to be there to tell us how much heat is inside that tube. Right. Now, for a fair comparison, all blocks are going to be heated up to 300 degrees Celsius. Then, Basically, whoever has the coolest inside is going to be considered the best. And from there, we will compare it to the control and see exactly how much better it is, if any. Now, here is the first test, the control. Uh, if you can see down there at the two charts, uh, there is currently no fan and it's up to 100. That tells you these guys are basically pointless without the fan, right? So let's put the fan back in and see the results of a full functioning uh, air cooled hot end. All right, so it seems it's stabilized at uh. 70, 70 degrees. Let's go 70.4, right? Um, that number is uh, not, not that great, but uh, more on that later. Let's go to the next one. All right. Next, uh, the Chinese FN, right? And uh, 
Let's see the results that we're getting here. So as you can see, 200, that's wrong. That That's not possible. Yeah, turns out that I put in the temperature control, I mean, the temperature sensor, all the way inside to where the block, the heating block is. So I have to take it back out and make sure I put it just at the tip, but not inside, right? To get an accurate. And we ended up with 57.6. Mm, that, that's actually a really significant number for, well, I'll touch on that right now, right? Let's go on to the final test. Okay, let's see here. All right, we're testing the big water block, right? All right, let's see what kind of test results we're getting. All right, as you can see, it has hardly moved. We're like at 30, 32. So what I actually ended up doing, because I was like, wait, did, did the thermal that just like, stop working i actually touched the tip to the uh, heater block and as you can see it is working it immediately started raising the temperature so i was like mm, maybe i'm too far away right because on the previous one i was just to close so i decided to measure it again and go right to the tip of where the throat would meet the uh, heating block, right? Let time pass. Let's see where the temperature stabilized. And uh, I even got it closer because I was like, I cannot believe these results, right? They're, they're, they were amazing. It's still stabilized at 38.8 degrees Celsius. That is wild, right? But it kind of makes sense more area for the heat to be stored, more area for the heat to be removed, should be cooler. Okay, so what are the results? Uh, 70.4 for that one, 57.6 for the next one, let me get out of the way. Jeez. Okay. So these are the results, right? This one did way better than that one. That one did eh, significantly better, but not as good as this one. So what do these results mean? Well, what exactly are we trying to do here? We're trying to keep the original filament that's coming into the hot end as cool as possible before it reaches the heating block and that's when we wanted it to actually heat up and melt well at what point does the plastic start to become weak right if we can get it from becoming weak in the first place It'll be strong all the way till it reaches the place where it actually melts. So what is that temperature where it starts to get weak? That temperature is called the glass transition temperature. And it is uh, it varies from plastic to plastic, but the minimum is 60 degrees Celsius. That's why represented here. It's just above, just above the 57.6. This means that uh, control over there is actually weakening the plastic before it's actually getting to the hot end because it can only keep the inside to 70. Now, this is for, uh, you know, you have your temperature up to 300. That may not always be the case. You're not always going to print at 300. You're going to print at 200, 210, 220, right? So that's not necessarily 
accurate to most of, you know, the temperatures that are going to be printing plastics every day. But it is telling that both of the waters didn't even reach that temperature, the minimum, right? If you're going to be printing at 300, your that same plastic will probably have an 80 to 100 glass transition rate, right? So, eh, this isn't necessary, but it's definitely a lot better, right? So this is like premium. It's not necessary, but it is definitely the best to have. So, that's what I installed. I installed the big one on my 3D printer. This is, mm, this is the one that's going to be printing out the hottest material possible, right? There's going to be a second one. I'm going to do something completely different with that one. But for this one, that's going to be super hot. This is the prototype. And as you can see, good results, right? Um, the thing that I did notice, and I believe I mentioned this in the beginning, um, before, ah, single up. Before I could, uh, you know, with the control, I was able to start melting the plastic at 190 degrees because it was already melting. It, 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 had, it was already getting weak before it was fully melted. So by the time that it got to 190 degrees at the base, it was already hot enough, like at 200, 220 degrees. And it would come out melting, right? Now with this one, that doesn't happen. I have to get it all the way up to 210, 220 to then be able to start uh, pushing the plastic and melting it. So, um, yeah, it's super, super, super effective. Okay. All right, so that pretty much answers that question. Between air cooled and water cooled, you definitely want to go with water cold. It's a lot more difficult to implement because now you need an, a separate water system. But frankly, as you can see from those results, 100% worth it. And it's been 100% worth it for me. So I definitely recommend it. And um, just be prepared to put in some extra amount of work. Right? And uh, well, that's it for this one. Let me start on my next project and